Uh, that was kind of a heartwarming story. Uh, I, I wonder, though, how warming the story is uh, in Quebec today with Liberals getting uh, a surprise majority there. We're going to be discussing that. In the meantime, listen to this. We are all Quebecers. We should all focus on what brings us together. What unites us makes us stronger. Let us say together with passion, nous sommes tous fiers d'être Québécois. Premier Lacouard uh, indicating that uh, unity is a uh, top priority. So let's discuss the election that happened in Quebec. And uh, Kevin Woodhouse is a Montreal political pundit and reporter for The Suburban uh, joins us now. Kevin, uh, was it a surprise that the Liberals had such a handy majority? Um, well, according to what the, uh, the polls were saying, they had been leading for the last couple of weeks. Uh, but I think people were surprised not only by the fact that they won the majority, Pat, but how it was announced at 8.44, 44 minutes after the polls closed last night. And, uh, and, and not only was, was their gains uh, uh, good, but it was the PQ's just collapse. Yeah, you're right. And it was the speed in the announcement that was the surprise component of that. Exactly. Yeah. What, why, um, do you, why do you think that, uh, for instance, the CAC did as well as they did, getting those 22 seats? Because last time you and I talked, the, the, it looked as though they were on the edge of collapse. Exactly. But you said it well, Pat, the last time we spoke. You called him a burr. You called Mr. Legault a burr in the side of the other parties. And I think really what happened was following the second debate, he just had a bounce. Uh, some pundits out here in uh, Quebec were even saying, what would have happened to Mr. Legault's vote if he'd had another week? Now, these are speculations, but he didn't get as trashed as he did. As a matter of fact, they gained a couple of seats since, uh, the, since uh, the last one in 2012. Yeah, no, uh, but when we were talking, he was looking like a five or six kind of seat, so 22 oh, is yeah, way better. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He was about to write his uh, political epitaph, but yeah, he's, he's back for another four years. Did Couillard do okay in the debates? I, I guess the sense is that he did okay generally, but in the debates in particular, what kind of guy is he? Uh, the first debate, he was really solid, only because I think Madame Marois was so weak. Uh, but the second debate, um, he really got piled on because, as the as the polls were indicating, Pat, he was the one to beat. So the CAQ and, of course, the PQ and the other party just jumped on him. There was a, a moment in that second debate where he really has sort of had that, oh, my God, I'm overwhelmed. And But what happened following the debate, Pat, was it was so much more pile on about the the PQ's uh, campaign that his poor performance really didn't stick with people. It was more what was happening with the PQ and just the absurd things they were saying every day. What kind of leader would you describe Couillard? I mean, is he uh, bombastic? Is he sensitive? What? what? I, I think your second choice is more. He's more sensitive and uh, he likes to be uh, seen as serene. I mean, he is a, literally a brain surgeon. So uh, I think uh, with his, uh, with his uh, former job, he's, he's, he has to learn to be calm. And I think he's one of those people that has learned to think twice and say nothing as opposed to just react uh, viscerally to, to something that occurs. He promised in the second debate that he wouldn't throw mud, uh, and he didn't. And uh, for some people, that was, that was seen as sort of a weaker debate uh, performance, but it, it, it certainly gave him the results in the end. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. The first, thing, one of the first things he comes out and talks about is uh, kind of like unity uh, amongst Quebecers. Is that the the tone that needed to come out? Absolutely. One of the things he said last night uh, uh, during his French discourse was the divisions in Quebec are over. So now it's time for everyone to get together and uh, really focus on, on, on the needs of Quebec, which is our, our massive debt, our infrastructure problems, our, our, our weaker economy. Uh, these are things that I, I think Quebecers really want to, to focus on, health care, and not so much divisive politics or another 18 months or four years, if, if they won, of a stagnant economy. One thing, Pat, the PQ during their last 18 months, we never heard much about the economy. We heard about charter of values and we heard about toughening the language laws and we heard about passports and we heard about borders for uh, a sovereign Quebec, but they never really talked about the, the economy. And I think that's what people are just hoping to hear from now. Yeah, fair enough. But uh, so uh, presumably charter of values is uh, dead. But what about these French language laws? Because the PQs definitely tightened things, but they weren't the ones who instigated them. That's right. Exactly. Um, I don't think we can expect to see the office uh, of the Langue Francaise or the, the French uh, Protection Office. They're not going anywhere. Uh, the last time the Liberals in power, as a matter of fact, they actually augmented the OQLF's budget. So I, I don't think that's going to go. But I think what will happen 
Um, inspectors may be told to maybe not react if you see pasta on a menu. I don't think that that's, uh, I, I, I think that the OQLF will still be around, but probably in a lower key uh, uh, circumstance, is, is I, my guess. I love pasta, Kevin, so I'm, <laughs> I'm glad they're not going to do that. Uh, let's exactly. take a two minute break. The Kurds have spoken, they have opted for to return the Liberal Party in power. I respect this democratic choice. But I do hope that you will join our party in growing numbers in the months and the year to come to build a real alternative. Kevin Woodhouse is still with us, and we were just watching Francois Legault of the CAC uh, uh, and his comments, Kevin. Uh, and I wonder who the, I mean, I know what the numbers say, but I wonder who the official opposition is going to be. Is it going to be the PQ, whoever is their leader? That's a separate question. Or is it going to be the CAC? All right, the kid's not working. Oh, his, uh, Kevin, it looks like Kevin's uh, headset is not working. We'll try to get that addressed. In the meantime, Gina Phillips has a little bit of um, public reaction, mm -hmm. if we will, don't you, Gina? Absolutely. We're getting a ton of traffic right now on our website. People, uh, you know, waking up and if they didn't watch it last night, they're catching up with the details now. Uh, it's a top story on our website. So sunnewsnetwork.ca, you can get all the details of what happened there. Uh, but yeah, if you scroll down to the bottom right, we have a web poll question today. How would you characterize Monday night's election result in Quebec? Interesting question. Uh, it, was it a liberal win or was it a party uh, Quebecois loss? So you can look at it kind of two different ways. Well, uh, most people see it as a PQ loss, 82% there, and over 800 people have voted now. So you can still get your vote in, though, sunnewsnetwork.ca. As far as what people are saying, while well, Quebec election is still trending today, uh, Pat, and it's kind of nice to see. All right, I'm going to do a very positive spin on all of this. Well, it is a positive thing, uh, but it's the fact that it, I can feel the patriotism online. I can feel uh, that people are sort of celebrating the stance that Quebec strongly took and, and chose solidarity instead of separatism. Norm says Quebec separatism took a hit today. So did intolerance, racism, and anti-Semitism. Seeing a lot of tweets like that one, uh, you know, calling uh, the PQ, uh, you know, for uh, some of their uh, positions. And uh, a lot of people thought that they were, in fact, racist and uh, discriminatory. A Ali says, good night, Pauline, good night, Charter of Values, good night, separatism, and good morning, Quebec. So, uh, yeah, some, some great, uh, great comments. Marie says, as a Quebecer, I am so happy about the results. Sovereignty is a thing of the past. We all want a united Canada. Oh, okay, Gina, let's pose that question uh, to Kevin or Woodhouse. Kevin, I think we've got your microphone. Yeah, we're back, we're back, back we're online. Back <laughs> is sovereignty a thing of the past? Um, the thing is, they've written that epitaph a few times. No, I don't think sovereignty will ever be dead. There'll always be a, a desire for it. Uh, polls say about 30% of people want it. Will there be a referendum in the next four years? Obviously not. And I think the, uh, the PQ has a lot of rebuilding to do. So uh, for them to come back and try and pitch sovereignty like the three uh, wannabe leaders did last night before Madame Merois' farewell speech was just absurd. And, and, I, and I don't really see sovereignty being an issue for the next few years at least. And people are rejoicing about it like, uh, like which is previously mentioned. Yeah, oh, okay. So then a couple of questions coming out of that. First sure. off, uh, Francois Legault we're listening to coming out of the break. I mean, does he become de facto the real opposition? He has fewer seats obviously, but I mean, will he provide uh, the opposition to Couillard? I would think he will because uh, I think the PQ have a lot of soul searching to do. Um, they're going to have to get a new leader and basically they're going to have to get a new program. Whereas Mr. Uh, Legault's, uh, the CAQ, the, this is only their second election. They're on the rise. People see him as steady. He had a fairly gaff-free campaign. People said it was a strong campaign. I think we'll have to look out to see what he does in the next four years to see maybe he could be, eventually become the official opposition. Okay, now let's talk about that PQ leadership. Uh, uh, friends, uh, what, what does happen there? Well, uh, I think it was a wise choice that Madame Marois, in a gracious speech uh, last night, uh, admitted defeat because um, experience, uh, the PQ leaders are great when they win. And if they don't win and if they don't deliver, the party just destroys them. So rather than go through the, the knives in the back, she just decided to step out. Of course, she had lost her seat anyway. Now it's going to be between the three front runners, uh, Mr. Bernard Drainville, who, uh, you know, he evoked the charter. He worked the charter for the last eight months. No success there. Uh, Jean-Francois Lisée, a former journalist who was uh, 
who, you know, who, who was sort of working on behalf of the Quebec Anglos, if you will. I don't see him being the leader. I guess all eyes may be on Mr. Pelado now, that uh, he's one out in St. Jerome. People may be looking at him to be the next leader. Yeah, why would the constituents in their own riding throw her under the bus, you think? Um, I think it was more of uh, just fear of what could happen if they had won uh, a majority. And uh, the electorate always seemed to know what to do. They, they didn't want sovereignty. They didn't want to worry about referendum. Strong liberal majority. Um, they just wanted to get rid of her, and she lost by 1,000 votes. And uh, 32 years in politics ended last night. Wow, and that's um, uh, okay. In terms of next steps, uh, Couillard obviously talking about unity. Uh, and what about the economy? Uh, uh, do Quebecers have a sense that they're struggling right now? Um, I think so, only because Pat, when you look at how other um, look at Ontario, look at the other provinces, Alberta, they're, they're, they're leaps and bounds ahead of us in terms of economy. And I think just uh, having a, a premier who was just going to talk about job creation and you know maybe lowering taxes or cutting, they're going to have to cut some social programs. We have a massive debt. So I, I, I think these are hopefully things that people will be used to. Or actually, in Quebec, we're going to start hearing again about the economy, about prosperity, about a future, as opposed to being bogged down by referendums and sovereignty and charters and, and toughening language laws that no one wanted, obviously, and you know, wholeheartedly rejected last night. Kevin, great to chat to you. Thanks very much. Always a pleasure, Pat. Take care.